Now at any given time, there is a lot that is happening on your system. This scrolling window that you're looking at is everything that's going on on this system right now in the background while I'm doing nothing. The way I'm able to see this is by using a tool called Process Monitor or Procmon, which is part of the Microsoft Sys internal suite, and you can download it straight from Microsoft.com. And learning to use this tool can allow you to look into the internals of your operating system, what programs are running, what websites you're connecting to, what kind of spying or telemetry might be going on, and also if there's potential malware on your system or if a hacker is controlling it. But as you can see, it's a bit intimidating at the start. So we're going to start off by stopping the auto scroll. So now we have a static window, even though you can see that things are still happening, events are being collected, our view has stopped moving. Now there are a few key things to look at here. First is the process name. So this tells you what process you are looking at. So for example, msedge.exe is Microsoft Edge or the web browser. The second thing you wanna look at is the operation. In this case, it is thread create. So it's creating a new thread, normal part of a multi-core architecture. But what if we wanted to look at a specific program like Discord? You can use filters. So we can select the filter operation. And here it's gonna give us a full list of everything that that we can select by. So let's say we want to select by process name and then you have different types of conditions. So you can say if it is this process name, if it is not, if it is less, more, begins with, ends with, contains. So it's very powerful in terms of what you can do. And so let's say process name is discord.exe. And then you have the option of either including all events that match this condition or excluding all events that match this condition. Right now, we just want to look at discord. So I'm just going to add this apply. It's going to take a little while. But once this is done, as you can see, we are only looking at activities done by Discord. And that itself is plentiful. And this tells you how much needs to happen in the background for an application to work. Now, a big part of this, of course, Discord being a communications agent is the internet connectivity. And you can see over here, we have a TCP send and a TCP receive. This is the network activity being done by Discord. And if we decide to double click on it. It's going to give us more details. It's going to give us the exact path, the exact IPs that it's connecting to. We can also look into the process and the command line. And this also can give us a lot of insight into what exactly is being executed by this process. We can also see all the modules that are loaded and who is loading them. So here you can see module discord.exe. This is obviously coming from our install location and app data where the program is actually installed. But you can also look at various different DLLs that are being used by this application. And in this case, all of them are Microsoft DLLs. But if we were hacked, let's say, you might see a third party DLL being loaded here that is not recognized. So that is one example of how you can tell if an active application on your computer is being hacked or used by an attacker is by looking at the modules that it's actually loading. So if it's loading a module that is unheard of, unrecognized, then that's one way to tell. Obviously, I'm not going to lie, using a tool like this requires a lot of experience and you do need to know what to look for. But what I'm hoping to do with this video is to introduce you to a powerful tool that might be interesting interesting to you if you're going to get into the world of reverse engineering and malware analysis and it kind of piques your interest in those things. Now let's go look at something else. So we'll go back to our filters and now instead of Discord, we're going to look at Shure device manager.exe, which is actually my Mike's driver application. That's the microphone I'm using to talk to you right now. So let's see what the application is doing in the background and voila. And once our filter is applied, as you can see, we have a list of only this process, creating a lot of files, closing them, querying information file. So for example, if this was ransomware and it was accessing a bunch of different files in different locations, then we could worry. But of course, it is only accessing some relevant files in its own install directory or in temp, the temporary folder. So nothing to worry about. Now, if we scroll through this, you can see there's a lot of registry operations here as well. Process profiling. What if we wanted to see only internet operations? There are actually filters here. So we can hide registry activity. We can hide file activity. We can also get rid of process and thread activity, profiling events, 
and boom, now we only have network operations and it's telling us all the network operations that this app is doing. Interesting stuff. So Raptor is actually the name of my computer. So this is an internal communication that's happening, probably some kind of local server going on. But then we also have some communications going outside using HTTP. So there are some TCP requests. And another way to investigate if you're potentially connecting to an attacker is to look at this address. So if you are connecting to an IP, you can find that IP and then you can copy that and try to search for it in Vars Total or in any kind of online threat lookup service. And if the IP shows up as malicious, then obviously you might be connecting to attacker infrastructure and there might be a hacker remote controlling your system via a remote access tool or RAT, something like that. But now let's get rid of the filter and go back to the fun stuff, the chaos that we first saw when we opened this app. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on auto scroll again. But this time, as you can see, we're only still looking at network activity. And you can see everything that's connecting to the internet. So we've got the mail client, we've got uh, the Motive app, Discord, Edge, and video overlay for some reason, although some of these are local connections. Microsoft Edge, Sure Device Manager. And if you just let this run for a while, you can actually see what is connecting to what on your computer, not just to the internet, but also the local network. So for example, you can see there are connections being made to my TV. That's probably for any kind of broadcast service. And Steam keeps popping there from time to time. It's just very interesting to look at. If you're trying to understand what's happening on your computer, this is the number one tool I would recommend using. So once again, check out ProcMon or Process Monitor. It's part of the Sys internal suite. And if you're really interested in any kind of threat analysis or understanding how your system works, it's very good to learn. So hopefully this video is a good introduction. And I think many of you might be surprised. Wait, I didn't know this much was going on in the background when I'm running my computer. <laughs> and do let me know if you'd like to see more tutorials like this and if you'd like to see more detailed tutorials. And don't forget to like and share. Today's sponsor is Threat. Locker, an interesting zero trust solution that's purely based on behavioral protection. Now we did a full test of this, which you can watch using the link in description. That was a totally independent test, but they also wanted to sponsor some of our educational videos just to show you how it all works. So they have this system called ring fencing, which prevents malware from doing certain actions on your system. So for example, your PDF reader can't reach out to the internet or a ransomware application can't access your documents. It's all based on access control and restrictions. And it comes with its own online console where you can analyze any suspicious behaviors or look at new files that you might want to allow to execute or do something sketchy. It's a really interesting solution for enterprises that want to control what's being executed on their endpoints. And like I said, we've done extensive testing on it in the last year. So if you want to watch that, you can check it out. So show them some love for supporting our content and just check out their platform using link in description. You can get a trial and see how it works yourself. It's a different approach to your standard EDR or antivirus. But either way, thank you all so much for watching. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.